Sport General Manager of Racing at Club and Angle, Mr David Watson joins me. And David, we're about to see a significant change of race dates for Club and Angle. Yeah, that's true, Michael. We've um, gone into the regionalisation. So we've um, picked up the Bankstown meetings and the Goulburn meetings. Um, so starting this week, we race on Anzac Day on the Saturday night. Then we have a Monday night meeting on April 27, followed by a Tuesday meeting. Um, the following week, uh, we race actually four days, uh, four times in five days. That's uh, Friday night, May 8. We race the Saturday night, May 9. We race the Monday afternoon, May 11. The Tuesday afternoon, May 12. And incorporated after that, basically every second week, we'll have um, up to four meetings in the metropolitan area. During the course of the months of May and June, David, we move into a very important period of racing for the Square Gator. Yeah, starting on May 2, um, it's always been the Trotters Carnival, so on May 2, uh, the club have uh, still programmed the New South Wales Trotters Oaks. I know a, a lot of states have really struggled programming feature races, but we've decided to stick with the Trotters Oaks. It's a $30,000 event on May 2. Um, there are some conditions that the, the race has to have eight nominations and eight final acceptors for the race to progress. Being that there's so many ballots uh, in the system at the moment, it's only fair that that field being a feature race needs to be as full as it can. Um, so it has got a minimum of eight. What can happen though, interstate horses can still nominate for that race. The way they've got to do that is with the regionalisation, uh, that horse has to be transferred to a metropolitan trainer, the metropolitan area, has to be transferred before the close of nominations. That new trainer will have to nominate that horse and it will have to stay in the region for two weeks. But if there's a, a filly in Victoria that wants to nominate, um, they can transfer that horse up to a, a metropolitan based trainer in New South Wales. As long as it's done before nominations close, it's accepted into the race. That's significant, Dave, because we always see strong representation from Victoria. Yeah, we do. And um, there are uh, other races on the night that you know, may be attractive. We've still got the La Cucaracha. It's been a great race for the last few years. It always gets a couple of Victorians come it for, up for it as well. So there are reasons why they can send. Um, also on May 9, the Trotters Derby's on. So not only um, if they send up a nice filly, it could be in the Oaks, it could be in the Derby as well. So uh, we've seen that with our Antonio Rose last Saturday night. It transferred to a metropolitan trainer from outside the region two weeks beforehand, and she came out and won the Easter egg. Now, speaking of the Easter egg, David, you walked onto the track with a very significant trophy. I thought you were walking out to present the Super Bowl trophy to the Kansas City Chiefs. It's an outstanding trophy, and certainly all those concerned, the Townsend family, will be very glad to have that on the mantelpiece. As I, I just mentioned, like it's a great trophy. Um, uh, Susan Townsend, the owner of our Antonio Rose, decided to send it down, take the gamble, sent it to Jason Grimson. He trained and drove it. It was here for two weeks. Um, I think it's having another start this week. Uh, what a great result for him. As Paul Hogan said, uh, yeah, that's not a knife, that's a knife. Well, that, if you're going to have a trophy, that's a trophy. And um, I look forward to presenting that to Susan in the near future. Now, David, last week I snuck one past your defence and saying that uh, I got your autograph in 1978 when you were playing with the Steelers. Now, to be fair, you played with the Steelers in the early stages of the 90s. Who did you debut against? Yeah, it's um, funny. You know, as a kid, you... And you would have known, you just grew up, not, I hate's a terrible word, but disliking Queensland. So my first great debut, I run, one of the first runs I made, I run into um, King Wally. He was captain coach of the Gold Coast Seagulls back then, early 90s. And I got to run into Wally and it was funny, there was someone that you really, really had a passionate dislike about through all those years as a kid. And when he tackled us, I just felt like saying to him, how was that, Mr Lewis? It was just in awe. But, um, yeah, what a great thing. It was Chris Close, Wally Lewis, and just you've got to pinch yourself sometimes that those things actually happen. Well, I thought about asking you that question. I certainly didn't think you were going to go straight to the top and name the king. Yeah, I know. It was a pretty good one, wasn't it? Uh, he was probably well past his best by then, too. Um, you know, we all know what a legend. You know, he was in the legend team, the greatest team ever, and probably the greatest captain Australia's ever seen. So, um, yeah, it's little things like that that you remember and yeah, stick with you for the rest of your life. Well, David, thanks for that little uh, trip down memory lane, and we look forward to more information as the news unfolds on what's happening here at Club and Angle. Thanks, Michael.